Ah oh, yes, 2020, the year of the CV-19, which I'll refer to as the uh, U.S. military virus. I wonder if that'll get me censored on YouTube, because saying the C word might. Yeah, there's, uh, there's more evidence showing that it was engineered in a U.S. military bio lab and released on the world. Uh, China was a patsy that was set up to get the blame for this. I'll come back to why that is later in the video. And I'll, I'll post links in the description box if they're still available. I encourage people to check them out. Yeah, this pandemic uh, didn't start in Wuhan. Okay, Italy, France, Spain, Brazil all had cases of this virus before Wuhan. And Spain had cases as far back as March 2019. Also, the, the Maryland, Virginia area of the United States had cases of the U.S. military virus back in the summer of 2019. Yeah, there were mysterious uh, pneumonia-type illnesses reported back then, which was blamed on vaping or e-cigarettes. And maybe some of you can recall reports that people had died from vaping or e-cigarettes you know, some time ago. Well, it turns out it wasn't e-cigarettes that killed these people. It was the U.S. military virus. And this took place right after a U.S. military bio lab in Fort Detrick, Maryland, was shut down due to containment issues. So there was a leak. And to cover that up, they said it was e-cigarettes. And guess what? The CT scans from people suffering, suffering from this alleged vaping illness is exactly identical to the ones taken from patients that had the U.S. military virus. So same symptoms. But, uh, but don't expect the media to report this. And after all, they get funding from the same corporations that are looking to get rich off of us fearing a virus. And that right there, that right there is why they released this bioweapon. Also, back in November of 2019, Israel was warned by U.S. intelligence about an upcoming pandemic in Wuhan. Now, this was more than a month before Wuhan had their first case. And that right there shows not only foreknowledge, but the intent to release something there. And page 60 of a Pentagon document called Rebuilding America's Defenses mentions an ethnic-specific bioweapon. Yes, see, the world is divided into three different types of nations. You have the Five Eyes Nations, the U.S., the U.K., Canada, the country I live in, Australia, New Zealand. These countries are owned and controlled by super-rich oligarchs. I'm going to refer to them as Zionist bankers. Now, these people are not real Jews, by the way. And a DNA test proves that they're not real Semites either, but that's another story. Then you've got countries that have been granted a certain level of autonomy, basically in exchange for being satellite states or puppet states, for these Zionist bankers. So the world is basically under a, a mafia type rule, with the USA being the mafia enforcers. Now that's why there's so many US military bases all over the planet. They're like mafia enforcers. And they also control the global banking system, with the US dollar as the uh, proverbial tip of the spear, or the gun pointed at people's heads. Yeah, this is, this is how they can financially blackmail anyone in the world and get away with it. Uh, international trade is done in U.S. dollars. And finally, that brings me to the third type of nations. Countries that are resisting this mafia rule. Not really in a way that directly challenges them. Okay, these countries are simply trying to be independent. Okay, they want to be their own country, their own civilization, following their own set of rules. Now, these are the countries that we hear so many bad things about you know, f uh, from both the mainstream and alternative media. Countries like Russia, China, Iran, Syria, Venezuela, North Korea, uh, the list goes on. The real, reason we hear so ma the real reason we hear made up horror stories about those nations I mentioned is because they are resisting the Zionist bankers in some way, shape, or form. And the Zionists want us to not only fear these countries, but to accept basically going to war with them. And right now, China is their biggest target. 
And, and I should also advise people to get rid of this good guys versus bad guys mentality when I talk about China because the geopolitical world doesn't work that way. Yeah, there are no good guys here. Yeah, this ain't a movie or a comic book. It's also worth noting that just because countries are not seeing eye to eye right now doesn't mean they disagree with every single little agenda that's out there. Yeah, that's something else to keep in mind when I talk about any of the countries in this third group. Like I said, there are no good guys here. I don't trust any government. But in any case, uh, the U.S. is in a tech war with China. And China's made advances in things like smart technology, 5G, driverless vehicles, cashless payments, artificial intelligence, supercomputers, robotics, etc. And the reason America's fallen behind in these is because people here realize that these things violate our privacy. And in the case of 5G, harm our health, harmful to our health. And so the U.S. think tanks decide to create a pandemic-like scenario where the demand for cashless payments, mobile apps, facial recognition, e-commerce, you know, telecommunication software would increase, and thus catch up with the Chinese. Uh, independent journalist Whitney Webb did an admirable job uh, procuring documents highlighting what I just said. You know, props to her. I'll post a link to her work if it's still available. So this scamdemic, I mean pandemic, was always political. And well, it turns out this bioweapon, whatever it actually is, a virus, a pathogen, something, okay, whatever it is, it isn't any more deadly than the seasonal flu. It's pretty harmless to people who are not elder, elderly with certain health conditions. So much so that the Zionist bankers feel the need to instruct health organizations to literally count people dying from motorcycle accidents and gunshot wounds as having died from this alleged virus you know, to, keep the fear, to keep the fear going. I'm not kidding, they really did do this. It's not just deaths they're making up either, but cases as well. Yeah, the reason you hear about cases rising right now is because it's flu season. Okay, they are counting the flu as cases of you-know-what. Plus, they're using PCR tests that are not designed to diagnose illnesses. Okay, even the inventor of the PCR test himself has said that it's not meant for that purpose. Okay, they are meant to detect viral particles. That's it. Okay, you can have viral particles in your system even after you've long gotten over an infection. Okay, it doesn't mean that you're sick or that you're contagious. In other words, you can be told you've tested positive for the U.S. military virus when you don't actually have it. Yeah, even a piece of fruit and sodas are testing positive using these PCR tests. I'm not joking. Okay. 80% uh, of people who have this thing don't even know they had it. Right? That's how harmless it is for a lot of people. Okay? The actual fatality rate is like 1%. Okay, this is why the news doesn't report deaths very much at all, and why hospitals are no busier than any other year. Uh, if you take the total deaths of any country, just total deaths of all causes, and compare those numbers to last year, and the year before, and the year before, and the year before, you'll find that the numbers are not significantly different. So all these lockdowns, mask mandates, social distancing, it's all political. It's nothing to do with health or science. Now, the reasons people resist mask mandates is numerous. Okay, one of the reasons is ma wearing masks creates an, I an ideal uh, uh, environment for bacterial buildup. In fact, there's been an increase in staph infections, gingivitis, gum disease, tooth decay since the mask mandate started, and from people who have never had these things before. Okay, not a coincidence. Also, people have passed out from wearing masks for so long because of the reduced O2 levels that mask wearing is creating. And right now you're thinking, what about surgeons and hospitals? Operating rooms and hospitals are climate controlled environments. So they can compensate so they can compensate for the reduced O2 levels. Also surgeons wear masks to keep their st surroundings sterile. Okay, they don't wear them to prevent viral transmissions. Plus they change them every so often. Okay? And then there's people who can't wear them because of disabilities, health conditions, PTSD. Okay, we're discriminating against them. And besides that, um, viruses are small enough to go through the masks. 
Okay, there are numerous studies that show that masks don't prevent viral transmissions. Properly done studies, where they would take a bunch of volunteers, split them into two groups, have one group wear masks, have the other not wear masks. And guess what? The infection rates were the same. So there's no reason to mandate masks. And studies that claim that masks work were observational. Okay, they were not randomized controlled trials, which is what a properly done study would do. And yes, there have been doctors, medical professionals who have been in their field for decades. Even Nobel Prize winners have spoken out against these lockdowns and such. Okay, doctors who have recommended vitamin C and D and also zinc as preventative measures against respiratory illnesses. Now, the reason you don't hear from them is because the media and organizations like the CDC and Health Canada and the World Health Organization are owned by the very people who want these lockdowns and restrictions to continue. Okay, these doctors are being censored, demonized, and even threatened with job terminations and having their li medical license stripped simply for actually following the science. And because of this, a group, a group of doctors have formed an organization called the World Doctors Alliance. Okay, I'll post a link to their website. And also the Great Barrington Declaration, a group of doctors declare, declaring their disagreements with lockdown measures and such. Uh, there have been an increase in depression, domestic violence, overdoses, suicide from these lockdowns. And because of the fear mongering, people are too afraid to get follow up treatment on their cancer or other health conditions, and they go left untreated. Uh, there's also the environmental consequences. Okay, people are not disposing of their masks properly. Okay, which means animal and sea life are getting sick or killed from being exposed to masks that have been carelessly thrown out. <coughs> now for this topic, I'm going to avoid using a certain word. Starts with a V, ends with an E, and there's two C's in the middle of it. And this thing requires you to roll up your sleeve. That rhymes, doesn't it? Yeah, pharma companies like Pfizer, and Moderna have created a certain product that are that were going to be pressured and coerced into getting. Now, I'm not going to get into what's in these things or where they came from or what their actual purpose is. However, there have been numerous volunteers who have been injured or killed during these during trials for this untested product that's never been used before. And yet we're expected to trust with our health companies that can't even do safety trials without injuring or killing someone. And oh yeah, these companies are shielded from liability, which means if their product injures you or kills someone you care about, you can't sue them. And there's a good chance the government won't even compensate you either. And worse yet, we're facing a situation where we won't even be allowed to live normal lives if we don't have proof that we've had these toxic vials injected into us. Okay, this is why there's so much resistance to this. Okay, this is worse than Nazi Germany or Soviet Russia. And like I said earlier, the, fat the fatality rate for this thing is 1%. Okay, we don't need these vials for something with a fatality rate that low. Okay, we have something called an immune system. Now, uh, getting back to this Cold War between the U.S. and China, uh, I've mentioned in previous videos that China has created a currency that's backed by physical assets, you know, gold, oil. There's even talk of copper-based futures in their stock market. This currency could one day overtake the U.S. petrodollar, you know, the very thing the Zionist bankers are using to th bully and threaten weaker countries. This is the real reason why Iran and Venezuela are struggling economically. And now China, along, along with Russia, are creating an alternative banking system outside of Zionist control. This would enable countries under U.S. threats and attacks to stay afloat economically. Uh, China's Belt and Road Initiative acts sort of like an alternative to the Zionist-owned IMF and World Bank. Not exactly like them, but poorer countries have that option if deals with the IMF falls through. Uh, China has also created, created a Wi-Fi system that's CIA hack-proof, which means the CIA won't be able to spy on places with Chinese Wi-Fi systems. At least not that way. 
Okay, this is why, this is the real reason why Chinese telecommunications company Huawei has been demonized in the media, and why Huawei's chief financial officer, Ming Wanzhou, has been taken political prisoner in Canada. Now remember, Canada is a Zionist-owned country. By the way, I do have a Huawei phone myself. So, yeah, pretty much all the fear mongering about China is BS. Okay, Uyghur concentration camps proven to be a hoax. Claims of China invading us and or influencing our politics also a hoax. Hong Kong protests funded by the CIA and George Soros. Same with the Falun Gong organ harvesting hoax. Uh, alleged Wuhan virus, U.S. military bioweapon. One that's also being used to create a digitalized society that the Zionist bankers control. So all in all, uh, China's not the one we should be worried about, worried about right now. Okay? I don't agree with everything they do. However, I can say the same for every single country on the planet. I just point out the most belligerent ones constantly on my social media. Uh, China also appears to be a bit of a wedge issue within the Zionist camp. There are people within the Zionist camp that want to work with China, and there are those that want to take them down. And the ones that want to take them down have control over everything that matters. The banking system, the White House, the military, the intelligence community, the media, mainstream and alternative. Yeah, the ones that want to work with China, uh, it appears all they can do is aid um, independent media outlets and independent journalists who are debunking CIA propaganda about China. And they do a really good job of it too. And they've been given the tools to do it. Unfortunately, they've been instructed to stay silent or go along with mainstream narrative about other issues. But uh, you know, that's just how it goes, I guess. I mean, after all, the Chinese market is a capitalist wet dream. Okay, they have more middle-class citizens than America has people living in it. So why wouldn't companies and billionaires want to do business there? Okay, that's why jobs were outsourced to that country, because they provide a more lucrative environment. And last I checked, um, even Trump's daughter has a clothing line set up in China. Okay, it, It's just capitalism. Well, I've covered quite a bit, of a bit of things so far, and and I didn't even scratch the surface. Surface. That's how much things are going on in the world right now. I haven't even mentioned that fake election that took place in the USA last November. Yeah, I call it fake because the votes don't count. Zionist bankers owns both Democrats and Republicans, and chooses who becomes president. Okay, all the drama surrounding that event is scripted kabuki theater. Yeah, that's all it is. It's just a show. It's like watching WWE wrestling. And it really doesn't matter which puppet is in the outhouse, I mean White House, because nothing will really change. Your policies won't change nothing. And the president is pretty much a slave to the Zionist bankers. And so is our prime minister. So I wouldn't put, I wouldn't put so much faith in the uh, political system because it's rigged and corrupt. In fact, every institutional walk of life, government, finance, media, tech industry, health industry, food industry, education system, law enforcement, justice system, military, organized religion, you name it, it's corrupt. Okay? We have pharmaceutical companies and tech companies looking to get rich off of this staged pandemic. Uh, the system is corrupt which is why we the people need to somehow separate ourselves from it. We need to get together and create our own community, create our own society, create our own societal system. We can't rely on politicians to do anything right. Okay? We have to do it ourselves. Even create our own currency if we have to. Yeah, I'm just saying what needs to happen. I'm not saying this is realistically possible. In fact, the only reason it's not realistically possible is because too many people have Stockholm Syndrome when it comes to government and authority figures. However, here's what we can do though. Uh, before we do anything, create our own society, whatever, before we do anything, we ourselves have to change. And when I say change, I don't mean little tweaks or fine-tuning. 
I'm talking a complete overhaul. You know, we have to drastically change how we view the world, how we view society, how we operate in our daily day-to-day -day lives. You know, we need a complete re-education on just about everything we were we thought we knew, especially our history. The biggest thing we were ever lied about is our history. And most importantly, we have to understand the concept of sovereignty, respecting the personal rights and freedoms of others, natural law. Okay, natural law is the combination of the golden rule of do unto others the way you want done unto you, or don't do unto others the way you don't want done unto you, and the laws of cause and effect. Now, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, human behavior and psychology works the same way. And until we understand these concepts, don't expect anything to improve. Okay, don't expect anything to improve. Right? Expect things to get gradually worse. Okay, Earth is a prison planet. Has been for untold eons. And I've already mentioned who our prison wardens are. And things like government and the monetary system is the ball and chain keeping us in this prison. And see, our dependence on money is something else we need to eventually phase out. Because that is the fuel that keeps corruption going. We need to start doing things not for money, but simply because it's right and necessary. We cannot solve problems using the same mindset and the same system that created them in the first place. This is why we need to change. It's understand the problem, then fix the problem. It doesn't work well. It doesn't work well without that first step. And it starts within.